What's up guys, in today's video I wanna talk about five essential plugins that I really need to use inside Logic X. I would say for all the years I've been through many different DAWs and studios and, and working through different sessions, uh, Logic's onboard stock is not bad at all, guys. Like it, it has, they have everything and more than you need um, as opposed to spending thousands of dollars on third party. Not to say the third party isn't good or bad, just saying there's many, many, um, you know, much room for opportunity inside Logic X and you buy the program and you get everything. So with that being said, I want to talk about five plugins that I really can't live without inside Logic. I'll just play the song I'm working on right now so we can get a feel for it. That shit is coined the funk. Uh. Okay, the first thing, first plugin, I honestly would would say nine out of 10 times, nine out of 10 projects, this is either on direct channel strip or at least on a bus, a bass bus, for example, a synth bus is the overdrive. So this bass line here, one and two bass lead are gonna be my main bass lines. And I always put them through an overdrive unit to, it, it's really to get that crunch. Now, this is also a taste thing for me. Um, the style producer I am is I like things to have more drive, more of that so-called overdrive in, in all my projects. Even the master, I love pushing in the red, but in that kind of healthy red, you know, obviously not too far, but to get that grit to the record. So if I open up the overdrive here on one and two, very simple, what I'm doing is dropping each channel by 3 dB and I'm adding double on the drive. So. I'm you know, basically doing three times two to get that six. I want to double it up and the tone I'm obviously getting full. I want the full signal up to 20,000, you know, past what, what we can hear as a human. But um, with these on and off, it is a pretty big difference. Let me just go to the mixer so we can bypass um, a little quicker so we can hear each one. So yeah, we're getting obviously DB, DB, you know, we, we want the volume, but we're not really looking for that. When I'm putting overdrive on something, I'm getting body to the actual synth or bass, and I'm getting a lot more presence. It's just driven much harder. And you guys obviously know distortion plugins and that type of stuff, but Logic's honestly, you guys can see it on a couple other channels, is a huge plugin to use when you want to get that more powerful bass to it. That shit is coined the funk. Uh. So there is a pretty significant difference there. Now, as you guys know, that have seen my videos, I love talking about details. That one to 2% difference is what's gonna make or break a record sometimes. So make sure you're paying attention to plugins like that. The next plugin that I really can't live without, honestly, is just Logic's onboard compressor. The reason why is I'm not trying to really compress, over compress things like I've seen in many people's sessions and lose dynamics and all that stuff. You can, you can really do that and ruin something quick. Um, with over compressing, but for a kick drum, for example, or even my my um, entire drum bus, is great to use a compressor, but use distortion. This is something a lot of people do not do. If you use distortion inside a compressor, you can get so much more knock and punch, and just more presence out of all of your drums. So let's go over to 65 here, and let me grab all of these. Let me just go to my mixer now. Let's put these all over to a channel. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Again, one to two, 3% difference is what's gonna do it. These should be all my drums. Now go to our compressor. And the Logic on board has a great amount of modules up here, way better than Logic 9 used to have. And all of this was hidden, all the functions. There was a bunch of functions down here in the tab. It really was um, a little bit more time consuming. So what I usually do, as you guys know, go through all the tabs, try different modules. I'm usually between Studio, FET, and VCA, the different modules. There's going to be a slight difference. But what I love doing on my drums is going to my distortion module. Now, make sure auto gain is off, and you don't want this on, the release auto. We want to control that. Now, for drums, just to dial in our compressor settings, I'm going to go a little longer on the attack, and we'll, we'll actually just dial this in for the threshold. I don't want too much 
um, reduction. What I'm doing is getting more of a thump out of the, dr the entire drum bus. So let's obviously bring this down. Now, right away, you want to watch out for your makeup gain. Let's set that at zero first. And now we want to mess with our distortion I've been talking about. And you guys can hear the kick is has a distorted edge to it. That's really how that sample is sitting. So don't pay attention too, too much to that. So that's our original signal. So that distortion is really driving the drums. Now you don't have to put this on every bus. You might not want your hi-hats distorting, you know, a bunch of stuff. Generally, I love utilizing this on either the snare or the kick. It really brings that extra punch to the song when it needs it. So you can hear my drums are sitting a little lower. Huge difference to me, major, major difference there. Okay, now plug-in three that I can't really live without. Really good stock plug-in. If we go back to our bass lead, our main one here. It's our main bass, we got three. Let's go to one of these. Let's go, for example, let's see which one we can use. Let me just zoom in here. I think three would be perfect example. Now, what I usually do is a space designer. Now, you guys probably have your favorite um, reverbs. So do I. Valhalla, you name it. There's so many cool ones out there, third party. But... Now, when I use this, I like using short plate on a bass or a synth type thing. Um, what I'll do is bring down my length. Uh, let's bring this really short, uh, quick, maybe half there. Now, the the cool thing here, guys, EQing in your in your um, actual plugin. A lot of them don't always have this actual whole band here for you guys. A lot of reverbs are low heavy. They have a lot going on down here, and people just leave it. You can't do that creates a bunch of mud in there. Now you can go between stereo and mono. That's also huge to be able to put it center or, or wider. And you guys can hear, I'm doing very short play. There's no tails. You know, it's not a huge tail that's gonna carry out and ruin each um, hit and snap on, on the lead here. It's very quick and precise. So make sure you're messing with your length. Okay, so that's number um, three there. I really like the Space and Iron. I'd say I use it in every single project somehow. Not always on my bass stuff, but um, leads to, you know, I'll use it also as a tail reverb, meaning really, really wet um, in a longer length. Just depends on what you're using it for. The other one I like using here, another plugin to kind of flip things completely or modulate in other words is a ring shifter this plugin is extremely overlooked if you're working in stuff that's kind of like cinematic you know aside from the project we're in at the moment something very cinematic and atmosphere and you need texture and just a really unique vibe that you just can't get out of a lot of plugins this might be your go-to this is going to really manipulate frequencies and and make it sound completely crazy so let's just loop this for example
So it's taking the frequencies and really modulating it to <laughs> almost to a point where it just it doesn't sound that great in this example, right? But the reason why I talked about in the beginning of this one is I create a lot of cinematic records, like stuff writing for trailers and stuff that I need to find a plugin that's going to manipulate a certain audio or a certain MIDI um, that no one can even recognize it. And this might be the plugin for you guys. This one here takes anything, like put it on a string sample and go to town with this, put it on a bunch of reverb, right? And make it sound almost unidentifiable. You know, that's what you want to do with this ring shifter. And that's why I love pointing this one out in one of my essential plugins because it's not used enough. Now, it's not a plugin you're going to need to use every single day, depending on the genre I'm telling you about. It's something that it's it's got to be in your in your tools, guys. It, it's got to be, and you need to use it in certain um, aspects in a track, um, such as a fill. I like using it in a fill and put it on a drum loop and really make it go ridiculous like that sound you know that's what you want so make sure you're messing with that one that shit is the funk. Uh. so the other one the last one here a very very simple plugin that um you know you guys have stuff like isotope there's mono buttons on your um you know your hardware maybe you have uh, actual hardware in your studio you can quickly hit it um but for logic users the simplest one and i'm sure most of you know about it honestly is right here in imaging stereo spread and direction mixer i'm going to put these both in the same category here they're phenomenal the stereo spread takes frequencies and pans them so and in, in, you know compared to just panning your actual channel strip taking the entire signal you can take in your channel strip um, your stereo spread and pan it via frequency. So if I go to this one again and we open up the stereo spread, watch how much more of a sound this has because it's spreading all these frequencies. You guys can see left and right. It's spreading this amount of frequency to the right, um, this amount of frequency to the left, vice versa. And it's doing it all throughout. So you're going to get a wider sound. Right? Incredibly different. And you guys can mess with the order, meaning now it's going to spread it out. So even, you know, more frequency range, basically 50 to 500 and so on. But if you want kind of a crazy sound, do this on maybe a hi-hat or something percussion wise to get something a little wider. You can get more dynamics and feel to the record by panning it that way. And then, you know, vice versa, going into mono, simply having a direction mixer to just flatten it out dead center. A lot of third-party guys are going to be using the S1 from Waves. 100% use it, guys. But again, I'm talking about Logic Insider today. Without spending money, you got the DAW. You got it for yourself. Just use the stock plugins that they have for certain jobs like this that are so simple. And you guys can go back and forth through Mono if you don't want to just go here. I like tightening in a lot of stems. A lot of my stems, bass lines and stuff, I like bringing them more center to get a cleaner sound. When I start spreading them left and right this wide, you know, think of the 3D S1 imager from Waves, same idea. You're really kind of losing the center body of your record, the, the middle. You need to have a lot of punch in the middle. So keep in mind, it's not always a great idea to go further than one. It's not, there's, there's going to be certain stances that you can, right? I'm not saying it's not doable. Just be careful when you're really doing this. A majority of songs are going to sound better when stems are mixed more center. All right, guys, so that's it for today. That is five simple uh, kind of essential plugins that I always use inside Logic X. Again, save yourself some money. I know there's a lot of great third-party plugins out there, and by all means, I use them too. But if you guys um, are not looking to you know, budget that in right now, you have them for you. You have great plugins inside Logic. Just figure out how to use them for the specific genre and track you're working on. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.